We are the prophetic royal coat of arms ministry. The reformed Pentecostal Anglo Saxon and Royal Empire of the Kingdom of God denomination, our Sunday worship service is 11 a.m. Our Thursday night Bible study is 7 p.m. Today we shall be looking at 2 Kings chapter 3. 2 Kings chapter 3. Today. And I am. I am His Imperial Royal Highness His Imperial and Royal Highness Archduke of the Prophetic Royal Kid Arms Ministry and of the House of Hanzoa His Grace Duke of Pomerania and Livonia The Right Reverend Dr. Colonel Robert L. Maxwell of the Prophetic Royal Coat of Arms Ministry, Royal Guard of Pomerania Livonia, Bill Marshall of the Prophetic Royal Coat of Arms Ministry, and of the House of Hanzoan, Knight of the Sacred and Military Order of Merits of the Prophetic Royal Coat of Arms Ministry, and of the House of Han Zolan.
Let this be a word that someone needs to needs to A word. We ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So, <clears throat> Second James chapter five, verse nineteen through uh, twenty says, and this is the New King James. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that he who oh. Back to 13, I'm sorry. Uh, James chapter 5, verse 13. And following, if anyone among you is suffering, let him pray. Is anyone cheerful, let him sing songs. Anyone among you sick, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer of, of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up again and if he has committed sin he will be forgiven so friends the Bible tells us if anyone among you is sick to anoint them with the with oil and pray in the name of Jesus and they will be they will receive healing. And what is that healing oil? It is olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. And I recommend church leaders, people, whatever, every simple bottle of anointing oil. Grab yourself an extra virgin olive oil. Grab yourself an old pill bottle. Take off the label, put the oil on, and pray over it and anoint it. Because the Bible tells us if there's any sick and any healing, to anoint them with oil, the oil of our people. And they will be healed. They will receive healing, transformation, and so forth. So, friends, I feel like right now God is calling me to uh, pray for some healing because you've been looking for healing and uh, God is calling me to do some healing. It isn't the oil or me that does the healing, but it is God Almighty who brings about the healing, the transformation, the healing, brothers, brethren. who are uh, in the name of Jesus Christ and that family 
because God is calling you to take anointing oil. And what you need to do is take some anointing oil and pray and cast out those negative and evil spirits out of your house because they are wreaking habit. But thanks be to God, since you are saved, they can't possess you. But some of your, your family members are being attacked by evil, demonic spirits. Some of you have come in contact with a Kenite. And uh, you need some healing, you need some prayer, you need to get rid of that evil spirit out of your house. Clean house. So that you're... So that you can use... that experience. As a springboard of opportunity. In the name of God the Father, and in the name of God the Son, and in the name of God, the Holy Ghost, we pray that you would cast out every negative and evil spirit that's attacking your elect who's attacking your very elect attacking 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 you right now they're attacking you and God is saying so in the name of God the Father God the Son God the Holy Spirit we cast out every negative and evil spirit upon these are upon your friends and family we pray for restoration renewal and healing wisdom knowledge upon these folks right now father god and they need some healing they need an extra double anointing to clean house and reach the lost members of the household of these folks we're praying in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the power of the Holy Ghost and in the name of Remission of sin. Amen. So anyways, receive that healing right now. It is yours. Claim it. He was wounded for our transgressions and by his stripes we are healed and you have been healed God has answered this prayer your prayer has been answered healing has come and you shall be saved your friends and family shall be saved you will bring the elect of your family and very elect home to God back to the covenant of grace that God made with them.
Now what I what you often not to do, and this is okay for you to do it in your uh, own family too. You're a Christian, you know, and elders in that passage of scriptures, bishop. So anyway, so just get yourself a uh, extra virgin olive oil. Obviously, you get you put it in a little thing like this. Pray over it to be anointed, and then what you need to do is, you know, put the sign of a cross over your over your threshing hold, and pray that every negative and evil spirit be cast out of your house. You Got to do that often to run them out. Because they're little sneaky buggers. So, if you will, turn on over to Second Kings chapter three. Get out your Bibles and take notes and follow along. Glory, hallelujah, I, I feel something, I feel there's going to be a snap in the spirit today. All right. Let's pray one more time for empowerment. Got to put on your... God spectacles and uh, pray for some more empowerment. More empowerment, my friends. More empowerment is better empowerment. Dear Heavenly Father, O Almighty God, we pray hail to Thee, Invictus Crown, Ruler of the Fatherland of the Elect, hail to Thee, Emperor Jesus Christ. Feel in the thrones, splendor the high ecstasy, and fall to me, darling of Thy people, hail to Thee, Emperor Jesus Christ. Neither steed nor mounted knights secure towering height, where princes stand, love of the Fatherland of the Elect, love of the free man, create the ruler's throne like crags at sea. Holy flame, glow, glow and expire not for the Fatherland of the Elect. Then we all stand valiant for one man and God Kaiser slash priest slash prophet, mediator and grand bishop, Jesus Christ our Savior gladly fighting and bleeding for throne and empire. Commerce and science hoist with courage and strength their chief aloft. Warriors and heroes deeds find their laurel leaves faithfully preserved upon thy throne. Forever continuing to bloom our flag may wave boldly on the high seas. Ha! How proud and majestic casts over land and sea widely the German eagle and the lion of Judah, the star of David and the Christian flag its flame and gaze. Be, Emperor Wilhelm and Kaiser Jesus Christ, hear thy people ornament for many a year humanity's pride. Feel in the throne's splendor, the high ecstasy in full to be darling of thy people. Hail to thee, Emperor, Priest and Prophet and Mediator Jesus Christ. Germany and the Anglo-Saxon Jewish Universal Empire of Israel Germany and God's Empire above all things, above everything in the world, when, for protection and defense, it always stands brotherly together from the Muse to the Memel, from the Adige to the Belt, Vertical Bar, Germany, Germany and the Empire of Israel above all things, above everything in the world. Skeptical. German women and God's elect women, German, and God's elect loyalty, German wine and the Anglo-Saxon Jewish Empire of Israel wine and German song, and the Anglo-Saxon Jewish Empire of Israel song, shall retain in the world their old beautiful chime, and inspire us to noble deeds during all of our life. Vertical bar, German women and God's elect women, German and the Anglo-Saxon Jewish Universal Empire of Israel. Loyalty. German wine and the Anglo-Saxon Jewish Universal Empire of Israel wine and German song and the Anglo-Saxon Jewish Universal Empire of Israel God's Empire song. Unity, justice, freedom for the German and elects fatherland. Let us all strive for this purpose. Brotherly and sisterly with heart and hand. Unity, justice and freedom is the pledge of happiness. Vertical bar, bloom in the glow of happiness. Bloom, German and the elects and the very elects fatherland. The cry resounds like thunders peal. 
like crashing waves and clang of steel. The Rhine, the Rhine, our German and the elect and the very elect Rhine. Who will defend our stream, divine? Dear fatherland of the elect and very elect, no fear be pine. Dear fatherland of the Anglo-Saxon Jewish Universal Empire of Israel, no fear be pine. Firm and true stands the watch, the watch at the Rhine. Firm and true stands the watch, the watch at the Rhine. They stand, a hundred thousand strong, quick to avenge their country's wrong. With filial love their bosoms swell. They shall guard a sacred landmark well. He casts his eyes to heaven's blue, from where past heroes hold the view, and swears pugnaciously the oath. You rhyme and I, stay German and the Anglo-Saxon Jewish Universal Empire of Israel, God's Empire both. While still remains one breath of life, while still one fist can draw a knife, one gun still fired with one hand, no foe will stand on this Rhine sand. Should my heart not survive this stand, you will never fall in foreign hands, much as your waters with no end. Have we our hero's blood to spend? The oath resumes, on rolls the wave. The banners fly high, proud and brave. The Rhine, the Rhine, the German and the Anglo-Saxon Jewish Universal Empire of Israel, the sixth and eighth day creation. Rhine. We all shall stand to hold the line. So lead us with your tried command. With trust in God, take sword in hand. Hail Wilhelm and Kaiser Jesus Christ, down with all that brood. Repay our shame with the foe's blood. And O Kaiser Jesus Christ of the Empire of the Kingdom of the Heavens and God and King Jesus Christ of the World. Long live the second dry hand dust forever to the third dry hand long live Kaiser Jesus Christ of the Kingdom of God and the Heavens and King of all the World. From the far corners of the earth let this prayer be so for Anglo-Saxon Hebrew Israelites. And for the multi-ethnicity house of Judah and for the Scottish and Irish house of Judah and the descendants of the sixth day creation the Gentiles. We ask and pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Ghost God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. Amen. Uh, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, and in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sin, give you absolution and absolve your sins. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Ghost, we ask and pray. Power of the Holy Ghost, amen. All right, let's get down to business. <laughs> Kings 3 to 127. Ahab's son Jerem began to rule over Israel in the 18th year of King Jehoshaphat's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria 12 years. 2. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight, but he was not as wicked as his father and mother. He at least tore down the sacred pillar of Baal that his father had set up. 3. Nevertheless he continued in the sins of idolatry that Jeroboam son of Nebat had led the people of Israel to commit. 4. King Meshur of Moab and his people were sheep breeders. They used to pay the king of Israel an annual tribute of 100,000 lambs and the wool of 100,000 rams. 5. But after Ahab's death, the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. 6. So King Jerim mustered the army of Israel and marched from Samaria. 7. On the way, he sent this message to King Jehoshaphat of Judah, The king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will you help me fight him? And Jehoshaphat replied, Why, of course, you and I are brothers, and my troops are yours to command. Even my horses are at your service. 8. Then Jehoshaphat asked, What route will we take? We will attack from the wilderness of Edom, Jerom replied. 9. The king of Edom and his troops joined them, and all three armies traveled along a roundabout route through the wilderness for seven days. But there was no water for the men or their pack animals. 10. What should we do? The king of Israel cried out. The Lord has brought the three of us here to let the king of Moab defeat us. 11. But King Jehoshaphat of Judah asked, 
is there no prophet of the Lord with us? If there is, we can ask the Lord what to do. One of King Jerome's officers replied, Elisha son of Shaphat is here. He used to be Elijah's personal assistant. 12. Jehoshaphat said, Then the Lord will speak through him. So the kings of Israel, Judah, and Edom went to consult with Elisha. 13. I want no part of you, Elisha said to the king of Israel. Go to the pagan prophets of your father and mother. But King Jerem said, No. For it was the Lord who called us three kings here to be destroyed by the king of Moab. 14. Elisha replied, As surely as the Lord Almighty lives, whom I serve, I would not bother with you except for my respect for King Jehoshaphat of Judah. 15. Now bring me someone who can play the harp. While the harp was being played, the power of the Lord came upon Elisha. 16. And he said, This is what the Lord says, This dry valley will be filled with pools of water. 17. You will see neither wind nor rain says the Lord, but this valley will be filled with water. You will have plenty for yourselves and for your cattle and your other animals. 18. But this is only a simple thing for the Lord, for he will make you victorious over the army of Mo. 19. You will conquer the best of their cities, even the fortified ones. You will cut down all their trees, stop up all their springs, and ruin all their good land with stones. 20. And sure enough, The next day at about the time when the morning sacrifice was offered, water suddenly appeared. It was flowing from the direction of Edom, and soon there was water everywhere. 21. Meanwhile, when the people of Moab heard about the three armies marching against them, they mobilized every man who could fight, young and old, and stationed themselves along their border. 22. But when they got up the next morning, the sun was shining across the water, making it look as red as blood. 23. It's blood. The Moabites exclaimed. The three armies have attacked and killed each other. Let's go and collect the plunder. 24. When they arrived at the Israelite camp, the army of Israel rushed out and attacked the Moabites, who turned and ran. The army of Israel chased them into the land of Moab, destroying everything as they went. 25. They destroyed the cities, covered their good land with stones, stopped up the springs, and cut down the good trees. Finally, only Kohasit was left, but even that came under attack. 26. When the king of Moab saw that he was losing the battle, he led 700 of his warriors in a desperate attempt to break through the enemy lines near the king of Edom, but they failed to escape. 27. So he took his oldest son, who would have been the next king, and sacrificed him as a burnt offering on the wall. As a result, the anger against Israel was great, so they withdrew and returned to their own land. So, interesting chapter. Rebellious Israel we see in the first few verses of 2 Kings chapter 3 and we just used the uh, New Living so rebellion in Israel some kings not so rebellious and other kings so we have rebellion kings obviously their disobedience, their still worship of all kinds of creepy stuff. So that's what God had to take care of because they were messing around with some heavy duty stuff. But Israel is uh, controlling Moab for a while, for a long time actually, and then boom. New king comes into power, rebels against them, and we're going to go out and take care of business, basically, because they're tired of the oppressiveness of Israel. But, 
King's got the King's got uh, uh, sticky, uh, sticky situation, so to speak. You know, need water for their horses and all that kind of stuff. So. See, they knew that uh, who the real God is in this chapter. They went to the messenger of God. Elijah. Elijah didn't want to bother with them because they were wicked. But just because but God decided to help them. Just because of one of their ancestors it wasn't as quite wicked as they were. And the next day we talk about a miracle was performed, there was water everywhere, and just, and God said they're going to go defeat uh, Moab, you know, that rebellious group as well. And they succeeded to do that. And what they did is to make This place, unable to have water to grow crops or anything like that. So that took place. And then, Moab sacrifices one of his kings in front of Israel and they were scattered. Because that was probably scary stuff seeing that. So they just... They split. That's where the chapter pretty much ends. And, like I said, this mess continued to go on and on. Kings turn back to God. Rebel against God. Turn back to God. Rebel against God. Turn back to God. Now, and I don't know what, you know, like I said, it's, you know, what their world view is in this situation, you know, it's hard to understand that kind of stuff. But anyways, then of course Israel was eventually defeated because their sinful wickedness is, was so bad that God had to deal with them. So, uh, I think if you want to look at who's more sinful and obviously it was the house of Israel that was more sinful than Judah. But Judah was pretty sinful too. But that's not saying that much. So anyways, the house of Israel, the northern kingdom of Israel, obviously. Uh, <clears throat> basically, got defeated, went into Caesarean captivity 200 years before Israel. And then after the captivity, they ascended over the Caucasus Mountains, migrated Europe, Canada, Alaska, America, and settled there. And that's where they are today, and who were later called Caucasians. So, anyways. So. The reality. Was that king saved? Who knows? All we know is that God had some appreciation for 
godliness that they he did some reforms that he introduced or maybe the guy wasn't saved but anything that uh, is good and positive obviously is from God and everything negative obviously is not a simple heart demonic evil world we live in either way who knows but anyways God answered their prayer and got the water and defeated the land there although the battles would continue to go on and the repeat of the repetitive patterning that Israel kept showing went on until it just got so worse and worse and worse that God had to deal with them and boom they're shipped off in the captivity to Syrian captivity but like I said after the captivity they sent it over the Caucasus Mountains migrated to Europe Alaska, Canada, America, and settled there that are called, called Caucasian. And we hear a mention of Judah, so, uh, must be some form, uh, there's some kind of form of cooperation going on between them. But what we see is nations, countries, disintegrate when God is not in the picture. But at the same time, divine providence is at work. Guiding to the grand finality. Serve a purpose in God's mercy and grace, grace and truth. And so, boom, they took care of business, just as God said they would. Elisha, Elisha performed the miracle. Obviously, God's the one that does the miracle. And we also see music being used to accompany the prophet. See, in order, and so we see in order to have more profound insight, prophetic, profound insight, prophetic insight, music helps. For the re to be receptible to God's influence and power to bring forth the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, healing, gifts of prophecy, prophecy, healing, gifts of God. Uh, Gifts of God the Son, God the Father, and God the Holy Spirit. Music helps to hear from God, to be more receptive to God's influence and teaching. And so that's why I think Christian music we listen to is very important. So, well, I I see this pattern in America. That's the when it comes to politics. And it's been like that, a uh, pattern like that constantly. Every time a new president starts running, 
before. Every four years, when the president, or when a new person rises up to run for the president of the United States, and what we see constantly is America gets tired of one party, and so they vote for a new party, they vote for a conservative party, conservative president, and the president starts doing that, doing what he's going to do, and then four years America may get tired of him, or vote for him again. And then they get tired of the conservative party, vote for the liberal party, then everything starts falling apart, vote for the conservative party, and the pattern is a constant repetitiveness. But, anyways, what God wants is strong, godly leaders in all forms of office, politics, and so forth. And when a nation is following, and you see this, Anyway, you see that pattern going on, and anyways, but no real change really necessarily happens, but I'll tell you one thing is for certain, the liberals, the pseudo-intellectual, intellectuals, pseudo-elitist intellectuals, are destroying the moral fiber of our country. And worldwide you see the godlessness that you are surrounded by in your life. But no real change really happens. But when a nation leader or people are following God, the nation is blessed, and when they're not, they suffer serious consequences for their actions, sinful actions. God uses His retribution, constantly uses His retribution on all nations, trying to point them back to God, to God, back to the covenant of grace which God made with them, but obviously the world will slowly and gradually be Christianized, ushering in a golden age of peace and prosperity, but it'll be slow and gradual, but anyway, so, but when a nation's blessed and God is in control of that nation, the, the uh, nation is blessed. Cities are blessed, states are blessed, schools are blessed, people, society is blessed when God is in control, when God is the guiding force of God being your conscience alone. It's blessed, but when it turns from God to, turns Godless, it suffers the serious consequences for his actions and the effect is everywhere because everyone will get what's coming to them, the good, the bad, the ugly, not only in this lifetime, but the lifetime to come, the great white throne judgment. But ideas have consequences. Worldviews have consequences. And when you don't have the correct worldview, 
There are serious consequences in society. But what we need is Christ a Christian theistic country of America worldwide. And it will happen slowly and gradually, but we are to play our role to turn people to God. You don't know who the elect is and who the non-elect is, but you still, you don't know who they are, but you still got to go out there and fulfill the great commission and do as God's called you to do to play your role in conversion of the world. So, anyways, when wickedness and sinful reigns, the nation's cursed, not only by their own sinful actions, but their ideas have consequences, and those consequences in the worldview have consequences. And when those worldviews are put in practice, since it doesn't work, that worldview can't work, doesn't work, only the Christian theistic worldview can work, which also is self-evident that God of the Bible is the real God and there is only one God. And that world and the way Christians think and act is according to a Christian theistic worldview. And we are to spread that Christian theistic worldview to all the four corners of the earth and play our role in converting uh, civilization countries all over the place because you're called to fulfill the Great Commission and make baptize all nations, not some, but all nations. Play your part. Reach them with the gospel. Play your role in pointing them to the gospel of Jesus Christ that saves, justifies, heals. A God that cares and loves and takes care of His creatures. And His providence guides us all, His elect and very elect. Well, and so, you know, godless reign, or godlessness pretty much reigned in Israel and Judah. And prophets were necessary, obviously, to bring us forth of, you know, the Bible. The old, you know, Old Testament, you know, all the scriptures inspired by God. And so these prophets were there to reach the nation. That was their goal. And God's elect and very elect were there. There was a remnant still, and they were there to reach people with the gospel, so to speak, to turn them back to the God of Israel back to the covenant of grace that God made with Adam and his seed. The covenant that was made with Abraham and his seed. To turn back to the covenant of grace. change the world, change their country back to God, destroy all of those things that which was making a mess, pointing them back to God, back to the Messiah, back to the covenant of grace that God made with them. And there was a remnant that was preserved and God doesn't let his remnant decease. 
is remnant. God's elect and very elect are here, they're there, everywhere, and we're going to take over this world and convert this world. And that seed is going to, that seed is going to grow and grow and become one of the biggest plants in the garden. And they will be blessed. And that remnant will get bigger and bigger and bigger until the whole conversion of the whole world. There will be periods of progression for God's elect and very elect and consequently will lose some souls, but in the end there will be more saved than not. But this transformation of the conversion of the whole entire world, even the heavens and the earth through the regenerating, sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit that galvanizes and galvanizes His church into action. It will grow and become the biggest. And, of course, and the Christian God will be worshipped on an international scale. Its moral civil law will be the law of the world. There will be small people that are probably not saved or adhere hypocritically to God, being to the Christian God, whatever. And then Christ will return, defeat the last enemy, the devil, who is the death, who is the devil. Sin will be defeated forever. Some will be resurrected to everlasting destruction. Some to everlasting life. And everyone will get be, get what's coming to them, the good, the bad, the ugly. Obviously, the conversion is going to happen slowly and gradually. And the light of creation, the light of conscience must be used to bring about the conversion of the whole entire world. But God calls you to your, uh, your your respective place, and whatever He calls you to, to play a role in this super. United worldwide revival that happens slowly and gradually that springs up all over the place and God is constantly calling us to bring about that revival in our towns or cities politics everywhere that God calls you to Turn to God, commit to God, serve God. He will bring about refreshing and renewing in your lives and every 
respective place that God's called you to. Renewing of your soul, your mind, your heart, making you more and more like Christ. And bringing that water of the Holy Spirit to the people that need it and stopping the growth of the wickedness, the flourishingness of wickedness through prayer, praise, and proclamation of the gospel, through study of the word of God, through music, worship, praise, intercessory, we will bring refreshing in the dry areas. God will bring refreshing in those dry areas and use you to play a role to feed the spiritual dryness in your cities, in your villages, in your towns, streets, you can and will make a difference. You can go out and do it. Bring the spiritual renewing, revival, and refreshing to those areas that God's called you and you to play a role in that, to go out in your communities and your towns and go out and make a difference. You can do it. God's called you to do it. So go out and make a difference. And God will give you the power to defeat and stop the wicked, evil terrors and so forth, infecting and choking and creating spiritual dryness in those areas. And you can feel the spiritual dryness. Maybe God's calling you to go out and do something about that. Maybe that spiritual dryness just presses you so much that you gotta, you just gotta, you, you just, you don't know what's going on, but you just gotta get up and, uh, do something about it. Maybe God's, God's calling you to go out and do something about that. You look around in your neighborhoods and the villages and it looks like a dead, dry place of press. You see those negative and evil spirits, those unfamiliar spirits around there and that place is just, Ravished. But God may be, may be pressing that on your heart so much to go out and, uh, do something about it. Bring about spiritual, uh, bring about revival in those areas that God's called you to bring. And not only in your own life, you'll be transformed and changed. Pointing them to God, the guiding light, providence, Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior of our lives. God, the whole triune God, go out and preach the whole triune God. Go out there and start reaching people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And God will give you the power to bring about revival, spiritual refreshing and renewal in your neighborhoods, in your towns, in your cities, your countries politics and all aspects of civilization the functions functionings of civilization and not only most important saving the soul from the rotting Dante's infernal reality Dante's Infernal. Dante's Infernal. Saving them from Dante's Infernal. Saving them from Dante's Infernal. You know what Dante's Infernal. You know I, I recommend you get a hold of it. Saving them from Dante's. Because they are burning. 
they are spiritually dry, they are messed up, and they need some help. They need you to do something, and you got to get out there in your villages and go out and start doing it. Start setting up tents and start starting revivals and start reaching people. Start stump preaching, do whatever it is. Light of creation, a lot of constant special revelation. Go out there and reach your people. Reach people. Reach the lost house of Israel. Reach the lost house of Judah. Reach the Gentiles, the six day creation, the non white people. Reach them. Get out there and do something. Reach them with the gospel. Preach the gospel. Preach the truth. The Word of God, go out there and reach some people because God has empowered you to do that. And I'm telling you, you don't know who who God's elect is, but God will guide you to who His elect is and help you play a role in bringing them to Christ Jesus. All oh, glory, hallelujah. Play your role. Go out there and do something about it. Bring about it. Spiritual renewing and refreshing it only comes through the power of the Holy Ghost and crushing defeat. The wild weeds and tears from growing uh, wildly and choking all the life that's in that village, in that town, in that city in the government and don't forget to work on your intimacy with God as well you know and God's going to use you so but you need to be charged up you need to be filled up you need the, the protect of the benefits of the covenant of grace so you'll be built up and edified in the faith transform and change so the gifts of God the Father and God the Holy Spirit can be used through you to make an impact to make a difference in your village, in your town, in your city, in your government, to end all the means of grace for you to participate in all the means of grace to go out and utilize the means of grace to accomplish the mission and goal that God's called you to. But intimacy is just as important as well that's why music you need to listen to good godly christian music sometimes and pray and listen to music so you can so the guy can do a stirring in you so he can use you in an apostolic and prophetic way prayer praise and proclamation of god don't forget to have intimacy and time with God, intimacy, studying the Word of God, praying, interceding, listen to music, being charged up so when you get up every day, you can go out and do battle and crush the weeds with the stones. Crush the weeds with the stones, make it unfertile for crush and destroy the weeds, stop it from springing up all wild and crazy, but you're like in a jungle and you got to take your little uh, sword of the spirit, a little knife they use to hack through jungle and stuff, and you just got to keep hacking away, hacking away in your life, things you need to hack away in your life and hack away in society to stop it from the weeds and the tears from sprouting up and choking the life and stopping it stop the evil that it 
hairs and the weeds from sprouting up with stones stop it from being fertile to suck the life out of it, to stop it. Of course, there's no life in it, to stop it. So that life, beauty, can flourish once again in your town, in your city, wherever you may be, whatever purpose that God's called you to do. But God has called His elect and very elect to go do battle with the evil one, to crush the devil, to hack away those weeds in the jungle, to get through and make a way where there's no way. And through the power of the Holy Ghost, God's going to give you that type of knife that helps you hack through the jungle, and, so to speak, and hack your way through and crush and stop evil from flourishing and life to grow again and when and when a difference has happened when a change has happened you notice and you see that change and God wants to use you for something I don't know what it is but that's what that's what's going on here only way to do it only way to get through, only way to get refreshed, the only way to defeat your enemy is through God and God alone. Because there is only one God, one Lord, one Savior, one Baptist, one baptism, one faith. God's elect and very elect, His worldwide empire. He being the Kaiser of the heavens and God and King of the earth for all eternity. King, prophet, priest. He has fulfilled all the various functions of the church. Fulfilled the types of all that in its various way, it forms and so forth and established it for all eternity. Turn to your neighbor and say, he established it for all eternity. One empire, one Savior, one Lord, one way, no other way. But anyways, there'll be periods of progression, periods of recession. There'll be a periods of apostasy and periods a progression for the church and consequently will be some souls and yes even God's elect and very elect can be a casualty of war and your physical life could actually you could actually physically die because there is real dangers and you could physically die but the good news is you're in Christ, you'll go to be with the Lord. But as the old saying goes, when your number's up, your number's up, so you shouldn't live fearful of that. Because when your number's up, your number's up, God wants you to go out and start a revival in your villages, in your towns, in your streets, in your countries, everywhere you go, establish churches, evangelist tents, and start preaching the gospel, reaching people with the word of God, and use all the means of grace to achieve that through the light of creation, the light of conscience, and special revelation. And any time you want a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge or prophetic word that will edify you and transform you, the key ingredients to activate it is prayer, praise, and proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is how you make yourself receptible to receive anointed word from God to empower you to get up and preach and teach the word of God for God's elect to go out and do whatever God's called them to, or called you to do or his very elect of uh, 
preaches and teaches and brings forth the gospel of Jesus Christ, but music and prayer and praise and proclamation of the gospel is the activated, active ingredients to make it take place to happen. The power of the regenerating, sanctifying work of the Holy Ghost. Music's important. Worshiping God is important as an act of greeting and to receive prophetic word, healing, miracles, or whatever. If it be God's will, to see the power of God working in and through the life of the uh, gifts of God the Father, the gifts of God the Son, the gifts of the Holy Ghost will help you discover which gifts you have. Music, prayer, praise, and proclamation of the gospel are key ingredients to activate the anointing, to edify it, to build you up to faith and make you more receptive to receive the word of God, going humbly before God, sometimes having music that puts you in a so uh, mournful type or solace type or whatever, or a victorious, whatever, but prayer, praise, and proclamation of the gospel is the key ingredients and uh, Elisha and Elijah knew that. But not all are called to be prophets and not all are called to be apostles and not all are called to be bishops and not all are called to be evangelists and not all are called to be deacons. Some got to uh, preach and some People got to go plow. Maybe you got, maybe your calling is to go plow with prayer, praise, and proclamation of the gospel are the key ingredients activated to receive a word from God, a prophetic word of God to God to activate and use the gifts for you for you to discover what your gifts are and intimacy with God and so forth. God's creating sanctification in your lives and He is sanctifying the whole entire world, the heavens and earth, slowly and gradually, so to speak. Building, so to speak, right now when He began to reign 2016 years ago, 15 years ago, in the heavens sitting on the throne of David. He's been slowly and gradually building his eternal kingdom. Heavens and earth slowly and gradually creating and building a new heavens, a new earth. Through us, sanctification, transformation, edification in your lives, and worldwide you're being sanctified and you'll be glorified, and one day, slowly and gradually, the world is being sanctified and glorified and shall be transformed for all eternity, but it's happening slowly and gradually. God is bringing Himself, His elect back to Himself from the four corners of the earth through the millennium, back to Himself, to the eternal kingdom, the eternal empire of God, the church, the elect, all glory. Music is the prayer, praise, and proclamation of the gospel is the key to activating your gifts in you to make it possible for God to 
flow his gifts through you. But we see it right there in Scripture. What did Elijah say? What did Elijah say? He said to the Moab. Or said to, no, not Moab, but said to said to the kings said to the king the kings go where is it verse 15 this is out of the contemporary English then Elijah said send for someone who can play the harp the harpist began playing and the Lord gave Elijah this message for Joram or Jarah Sure I am. See, Elisha knew the key ingredients was music, prayer, praise, and proclamation of the gospel. Edification, transformation in your life, prayer, praise, and proclamation of the gospel. And so basically, Prayer, praise, and proclamation was necessary for Elisha to be open to be a, uh, so a vessel by which God could speak through him as one of God's very elect chosen to do that. Elisha being one chosen for that, that purpose, and there was a whole school of prophets, and they you see training and see if you really want to experience God on a whole new level then music is the key and Elijah knew that Elijah knew that the prophets knew that why do you think there's music in the church why do you think some preachers have music in the background when they're preaching because prayer praise and proclamation of the gospel activates your gifts makes you a vessel for God to use you for what He has called you to do. If that be a word of wisdom to somebody, if that be a, a word of knowledge for somebody, if that be a supernatural healing, if that be interpretation of tongues, Whether that be whatever gifts to use the gifts and you also have gifts of God. I thought that was the gifts of God, the Holy Ghost, but now some of it is, but there's God gives gifts to God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit gives us gifts for His service, for your edification, for your transformation, before, so you can go out and make a difference and transform this world. That's why prayer, praise, and proclamation is a key, and intimacy with God is also a key to activate the gifts in you, so God can be a vessel Use you as a vessel to power you to go out and do what he's called you to do. But all the praise and glory goes to God. And if it is God's will, then it'll happen. If not, it'll happen other ways. Healing's the same way. Maybe you'll instantaneously. Maybe God will want you to pray for somebody to supernaturally heal. But music, uh, prayer, praise, and proclamation is the key to activate that. And then you go out and do that. And maybe they don't get supernaturally healed. But my friend, God answered that prayer. He's going to bring about healing either way, however he does. Sometimes he does it like that. Sometimes he does it 
Because it is God who is in charge and it is God who wills it through us. And it's for His purpose, for His plan to transform the world, to bring about revival worldwide, transformation in your life as God's elect and very elect members and citizens of His empire. Christ being your Lord and Savior who redeemed you and so forth, giving Him praise for what He did, being blood washed, so forth. But prayer, praise, and proclamation of the gospel is the key. Indeed, turn to your neighbor and say, prayer, praise, and proclamation is the key to activate the stuff that God wants to use through you and in through, uh, in and through you. To use you for to play a role in your duties towards God and civilization to one another. That's how it works. Elisha knew that. Elijah knew that. And putting your trust and your belief in a eh, completely entirely in God's hands is the key to the transformation, to the blessings, for healing, worldwide revival, solve the world's crisis, and so forth through the light of creation, light of conscience, and special revelation. God is doing some supernatural, mighty stuff, and you may not see it. It may be, so to speak, in your eyes behind the scenes, but it's there, and things are changing. And God is converting the whole entire world. The world is slowly and gradually being Christianized, ushering in a golden age of peace and prosperity. And there's nothing the devil can do. There's nothing your sinful flesh can do. There's nothing the devil can do. There's nothing the Kenites can do. There's nothing the, the demonic evil and negative evil spirits Can't achieve it, can't be, can't defeat God, can't overthrow God, can't stop God. God's will will be done. And justice will be achieved. Retribution will happen for sinful wickedness in your life. Discipline, transformation, retribution on sinful wicked people. Judgments happen because it's time for people to repent and accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you need to go re and and maybe and 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 reach people with the gospel. See. Uh, uh, prayer, praise, and proclamation of the gospel is also a key to reach people with the gospel, the light of creation, the light of conscience, and special revelation. Reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ and the truth. Play a role in the conversion of the world, the conversion and transformation in your life worldwide. God has a mighty and awesome destiny, and my friend, you're playing a role. In the conversion of the world, whether you know it or not, brother, turn your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're playing a role in converting the world even though you don't know, even though you don't know it. Because you're a lowly, humble servant that's bowed before God in humbleness. And humbleness before God uh, is also a key part of prayer, praise, and proclamation of the gospel. Turn to your neighbor and say that. Say, neighbor. Yeah, what he said, the preacher said. So, prayer, praise, and proclamation of the gospel. That's the key. And God has a very broad definition of music, so... 
have a narrow-minded perspective on what I mean that the music is a key to activate it because God has a broad sense of what music is. Praying to God is music to Him. You talking to Him in prayer, praise and prophet. Or you talking to Him in prayer, praise and to the gospel is also where it's activated so God can make you a vessel so you can do what he's called to do in power with the Holy Ghost and obviously daily being filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, reading uh, songs out of the book, reading some songs is music to God, studying the word of God is music to God. Studying the sciences, the applied sciences, the sciences of intelligent design, learning about our world. So that has a broader definition of what music is. But the point I'm making, prayer, praise, and proclamation of the gospel is music to God. And it's manifest itself in many forms for edification, transformation, and builds you up in faith and builds up the elect in the faith and the very elect by you participating in the covenant blessings of God. What are How do we screw up? Second dispensation of covenant grace, you need to exercise the benefits of the second dispensation of the covenant of grace, utilizing all the tools that God's called you. That plays a role in prayer, praise, and proclamation of the gospel, repeating his words, even memorizing his words. That is important, showing devotion to God, love towards God. God has a broader definition of what music is. How is the covenant of grace administered under the New Testament? Under the New Testament, when Christ, the substance, was exhibited, the same covenant of grace was, still is, to be ministered in the preaching of the word and the ministration of the sacraments and supper, in which, in which grace and salvation are held forth in more fullness, evidence, expectations, empathy to all nations, participating in you. partaking in the benefits of the covenant grace that Christ procured you. Prayer, praise, and proclamation of the Word of God, your study of the Word of God, you knowing what you believe, why you believe it, knowing the essential doctrines of the Christian faith so you know what you believe, why you believe it, and how to do the work of ministry, developing a Christian theistic worldview, prayer, praise, and proclamation of the gospel also is a key to Developing a Christian theistic worldview in your life is there's things in your life that don't line up with the Christian, that you believe that don't line up with the Christian theistic worldview that's got to be dealt with slowly. And that will happen slowly and gradually through the regenerating, sanctifying work of the Holy Ghost. You've been sanctified, you're being sanctified, and someday you'll be glorified. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Rewarded and blessed. Rewarded and blessed with blessings and rewards and eternal intimacy with God for all eternity in the third world age and heaven age, the eternal state. In fact, there's been studies to show that music helps develop creativity in you. And when you're listening to music, you've said that uh, a whole lot of your brain is activated. So even the light of creation can, might be is confirming it. Now, there may be a debate about that for a long time, but you know by the word of God and the truth that that is in fact true indeed. They already proved that music can help develop a child's brains. Mozart they recommend, and I recommend that too. It's not a cure-all for everything, but a friend why that kind of ingenuity to prayer, praise, and proclamation of the gospel and watch what happens in your life. And some of you need to recognize that some of you have not been nourishing that spiritual worship and praise prayer and proclamation of the gospel and God want and God really wants you to uh, not just act out and mimic God but he wants you to respond to the music. And there's some unrepentant sin in your life, and God tells you right now you need to repent of it and get it out of there. And ask God to empower you to focus more on the focus to have a healthy balance of uh, prayer, praise, and proclamation of the gospel. As old King Psalm says, uh, steady wearies the mind. Paying attention to all the other stuff all the time and not focusing on your intimate, uh, intimate, having intimacy. You're not focusing enough intimacy on, uh, for God, with God. And He wants you to do that. He wants you to have that intimacy. Want you to have which is a healing that will transform and change and edify, but you need to want you to repent of it and get it out of the way and ask God to empower you to not only just mimic what He wants you to do, but to respond to the music, to pay more attention to that side of serving and living for God, coming more and more like him each and every day slowly and gradually that's not to say that study is important devotion is important study is important theology is important sciences are important but Making time for prayer, praise, and proclamation of the gospel. That's important to your spiritual life for edification so that you 
that you can be a vessel for God to work His gifts through you so you can go out and make an impact and change and do what God's called you to do, to hear what He's calling you to do, to charge you up, to empower you to go out and do that. And now it's once it'll make and bring about healing and transformation in your life as well. That's what God's calling you to do. And you know who you are. If the shoe fits, wear it. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I'm speaking, I know I'm speaking to someone right now. I'm speaking to you right now. And you know who you are. Who you are, those people. You haven't been spending a we have, We don't spend enough time developing our intimacy with God, developing the spiritual disciplines, the intimacy with God, prayer, praise, and proclamation of the gospel. Too much study makes you weary. Although studying is important, learning the essential doctrines of Christian faith is important. Doctrine, theology is important, but your intimacy and your devotion is also important to your spiritual development. So God can produce the fruits of the Spirit in you, in you and through you. Make you more sensitive to the needs of the people that God's calling you out to help. Lastly, music's important. Clapping. Shout, dancing, moving, all of those things move you into position to receive receive the edification transformation that God wants to achieve in your life. That God wants to achieve in your life. Music moving, shaking, dancing, all that stuff makes you receptive uh, and being humble. Sometimes, sometimes the fig tree opens up, activates the inspiration. The things that God wants to produce in your life makes you a vessel for Him to produce and to achieve what he wants to achieve in your life. So don't neglect your intimacy, your worship, your praise, your clapping, music, all that stuff is important for your transformation, edification, for healing, and so forth.